yeah so you could tell like over there they didn't do over there but look at this side here all the way over to the campsites over there so like I said the, he said they came in with a skid steer that had a wheel on the front of it and just started grinding everything up so like I said there's a ton of wood just sitting here that's why I asked him I said do you mind if I uh, salvage some wood he goes nope not at all so that's what we're doing we're gonna salvage some wood why not help clean things up and and it's free JG likes free free's good Well guys, it turned out to be a beautiful day. It was supposed to rain, um, actually up until about three hours ago, it was a 90% chance right now. And as you can tell, it's still nice and sunny out. So my plan was to have a stake over top of the fire pit. Now this is, wouldn't be called quite a stake, it's a, like a chuck roast and then they, well, it's extremely thick. So I'm gonna build a fire and then I'll put the uh, tripod over top of it. I haven't used it for quite a while, so I think today's the day to use it. And I'll explain a little bit more about that tripod. Oh, somebody was asking me, why do I keep a can of air? Well, so if you see my windows, you'll see that there's a, uh, a screen. So you open up the window and then you put the screen down. Well, if I wanna close these windows, how do I make sure that there's no bugs? Well, that's where this comes into effect. So if there's bugs on here, well, for instance, there's a, see the uh, arm over there? You see that wasp sitting against the arm? Now, I, I've had them on the screen before, but let's just say I want to close this window, okay? So I'm going to lift up the screen. It's like, okay, I can't close the window because there's a wasp on the end of it. So I'll just grab my can of air, see? And he's gone. And then I'll close the window. Um, well, look at this. Here's on the back door. There's a little guy sitting right there on that screen. Let's just say that was the screen for the window. Sorry, buddy, but I'll just give it a little blast of air and he's gone. Then I can close the screen or, sorry, open the screen and then close the window. That's why I have this can. So anyways, guys, we're going to uh, just put a little bit of uh, salt and pepper. That's all I put on mine. So I'm just going to put a just uh, sea salt, pepper, go to town. Oh, fresh ground pepper. Excellent. Then what you do is you take your big fork and you jab it in your, no you don't. Do not stab your beef. Now I just took this thing out of the fridge, so this thing is probably gonna sit here, I'm gonna say for at least, I don't know, four hours. Do not stab your fork or your beef until you're ready to eat it. Okay, that's it for in here. Let's go outside and uh, get this fire going. Look at this. This morning, it said it was a 90% chance of rain today. Actually, everybody packed up here. When I say everybody, there's two trailers there. This was all this morning full. There was two people camping here last night. There's nobody here. Everybody took off. All right, guys, the fire's been going for about uh, half an hour now. There's that piece of beautiful meat. So anyways, I, like I said, I've had the fire going for about a good solid half hour now. So there's some coals in there. And this is a big chunk of meat. So I've got to, like, look at how thick that bad boy is. So I've got to uh, lower the grill down and get some charring on both sides and then raise the grill. And then I'm gonna tell you about the tripod and some other stuff. I did a video earlier, and when I say earlier, probably like four months ago, uh, on Vancouver Island about this tripod and some other things. And yeah, the whole video's gone. But um, someday I'm gonna redo that video and then I'll say, this is the one that went missing. Anyways, I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna get the old steak on here. That is beautiful chunk of meat. There we go. The meat is owned.
I'm just gonna leave, just flip it once. Friends of mine back in Ontario, Mark and Sherry Rowe, um, I, I said to Mark, I said, uh, can you make me a tripod? And he goes, yeah, yeah, I can make you one. So he made that tripod. I, I bought the uh, grill from Canadian Tire, but what he also does, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, <laughs> right here. So he forges. So Sherry, Mark's wife, she does the leather work and Mark actually does the forging. So this is a kitchen knife and I know Mark, you're gonna sit there and go, JJ, I know, you're gonna to have to clean these up for me, but. And that's his kitchen knife. So it's a Japanese way of metal. So they, they, they make the metal folds it and pounds it and folds it and pounds it and there's layers and layers. So yeah, he made that for me and a fillet knife. Look at that bad boy. And Sherry, she does all the leather work. Look at that. So, and so look at, there's that beautiful knife. Like I said, so it's, it's uh, the Japanese. Can you guys see that? I should get almost in the sun so you can see the layers. It's probably, is that better to see that? The layers of steel? You can see how it's all folded over. You know, I'm a little too close. Try that. Yeah, so. But I also told him, actually the first, okay, I just went all crooked. There we go. The first, and then there's the leather. So before I, before I move on, so then this is uh, the sheath that uh, Sherry made for this knife. What I also wanted, and if you know what, if you pay attention to my videos, you'll see this. Over my back door, I said to Sherry, I says, you know what I'm looking for is a sheath that I can mount in the truck camper so that this will sit in that sheath above my door. So when I need the knife, I just pull it out but the sheath that the second sheath that stays up there and i'm sure you've seen it if you actually look at my videos you'll see this sitting above my door but the first knife i got mark to make me i said i'm going out in the bush and i need a special knife so it's a knife that's got to get me through jungle it's also got to be a very intimidating knife it's the don't f with me knife so this is the, so we sat down and I kind of looked and this is what we came up with, <laughs> the size of this thing. <laughs> yeah. And it looks kind of rough because I use this thing, I use this to split wood. I am not joking. It's actually, and so I joke with Mark when he made it, because this blade is actually a Ford truck spring. So of course me being the Chevy boy, I said, great, it's gonna break after the first time I use it. What else am I gonna say? But anyways, it's a heavy knife. Look at the grip on there. Brass. So I use, so every time I'm out in the bush, and if you watch uh, some of my videos, I've, I've had this on. When I did that um, walk and talk video on Vancouver Island, you would have saw me with this on my, on my side. Actually, I would have had both knives. But this is the knife I use if I'm, you know, out there smashing and bashing, have to cut a tree, um, I, like I said, I've used this to split wood. I've actually put this on a block and used another block to hit this on the edge. And I haven't done nothing to this thing. It hasn't affected. And I'll tell you something, it's still sharp as a frickin' rock. Sharp as a rock. Sharp, that doesn't even make sense. Yeah, so, um, so I want you to go to their web, their, their Facebook page. It's called Fire Pit Forge and I'll write it on the top of the screen, Fire Pit Forge. I believe they also have um, a website, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but if, yeah, you can go look, look them up. Uh, he'll do anything, you'll see all the knives he's made. And he will, man, like I said, we just, we just came up with this one. And as soon as we came up with this one, a couple of people saw it and said, I want one. So he'll ship them, you guys look them up. Like I said, Sherry does all the leather work and Mark is the forger. So 
Check them out, guys. Like their page. Thanks. Holy crap, I was supposed to flip this a minute ago. This thing's almost gonna be cut. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, I should have been paying attention more <laughs> instead of talking. Anyways, let's go take a look. Look at that. Oh, tell me that is not going to be tasty. Yeah, so he made me this tripod and uh, it is heavy duty, <laughs> half inch. This is not the cheap little sections you put together. This thing's heavy. And like I said, I uh, just picked up that uh, grill from Canadian Tire. I believe it fits on like almost like a green egg or something. And then I put the chain and, and this is the uh, just aircraft cable. I used to have downriggers. So I had to roll that uh, small cable for the downrigging. And that's it. Bought a pulley and, and just this piece of flat bar. So I just drilled it out so it's the same size. Basically it just slides over. And of course, when it pulls up, it just locks in, right? Just, just from friction. But anyways, yeah. So guys, like I said, so Mark and Sherry row. And uh, like I said, Fire Pit Forge on Facebook, give them thumbs up, and uh, tell them JJ sent you. All right, we'll uh, catch you in a bit. Oh, so uh, there's the, uh... so what I did is I took, the, I took the baked potato, I cut it in half, and then I scored it, and then I put garlic and butter, and then folded the tin foil around it. So it sat, like there's two halves, obviously. And that way the uh, garlic or the butter, when it melts, it takes it in there and it's all done. I don't have to do nothing when I pull it off. I'll eat one tonight. The other one would be for supper tomorrow night. Perfect. Yeah, look at this. It's supposed to be pouring rain right now. Oh, we said. For a little bit look at that delicious piece of meat so what i'm going to do now is like i said i made i cut the potato in half so i'm gonna see that so i'm gonna take that now and just put it on the fire so well not on the fire obviously but put it beside that nice little piece of meat right there and Ooh, <laughs> don't blow off. There's butter and garlic. No. Oh. Okay, blow all the ash. Oh, Gage. Really? Crap. Didn't go quite what I thought I was gonna do, but anyways, I was gonna put that on top of the meat, whatever remaining on. Wow. It was a thought that counts, right? Nothing but a wrecking ball. And we drive right into the sun. And the sun was round the corner for every young. See these plates? I got them at the dollar store. So when I originally bought these, I got them because I was on my boat and they just sit perfectly. Like, you, you know what I mean? They're plastic. So that's another reason why I got them because they're, for the boat, they're light. But 
I mean, I've had them now for, honestly, 20 years. And yeah, they still work good. nothing like over top of the fire. There is nothing like over top of the fire. Uh oh. I just got a drop of water. <laughs> Here we go. Actually it held off. Mm. That potato is fantastic. My God. What is it about cooking over wood? Oh. Your pride, my faults. Thought I canceled the sand. We made it withstand the tide of the ocean. Oh, that's it, guys. She finally showed up. Hear it? Yep. Oh. Oh, that was a big flash. Yeah, it was a big flash. Okay, what, what's the weather doing out there? There's the old fire. Still going. It's been raining pretty good. So anyways, guys, we're still here at Old Salem. I'm here for two more nights and then back on the road again. But anyways, we're gonna take the electric bike because I was talking to the uh, camp host, Neil, and uh, he gave me a map. And if we go across, so we're right here, this is the campsite here. And if we go across the highway, there's some trails down here, but there's an old restaurant that's closed down now, but the river runs here. And you can see where the, um, Grist mill is like right right there. So there's the river. So I'm thinking that right about in here somewhere we might see something that actually made the river flow in this direction here and now it's going this way. So whoops. Anyways, I'll just take this map with us and uh, we will uh let's go for a bike ride. Oh, we said we'd be always so this is the restaurant that got closed up for some reason, I'm not quite sure <clears throat> what exactly happened here. Um, I know there was kids, I guess, did some vandalism here. Uh, violators will be prosecuted. Well, I guess I might go to jail, guys. So, you can see the old power station there. It's a beautiful building. I wonder what happened. Well, obviously. They closed down. It's probably one of those places that closed down during COVID, right? That's usually what happens. Big parking lot up here. Well, there's a picnic area down here, which we'll go and see. Building under surveillance. So they are all locked up. Not a bad looking building. Copper flashing right there, you can see it. That's cool. All right, so we are now at the at that picnic area. And so they got a nice little playground and a shelter area. So that's where we are right here. So right here. 
So then that's where I'm camping there. So I crossed the highway here and then came down this road. And that's the boat ramp over there. So that's a shelter. So I'm thinking about taking this trail here, which will bring me back out at the sawmill. And then I can come along the highway here and then come back up on this road here to my campsite, which is right there. Let's check this trail out. Interesting. I'm always fascinated when I see stuff like that. It's like we're out in the middle of nowhere. And yet there's a fire hydrant. So way back when this was put in, was it a plan at one time that this would all be developed? Because I guarantee if there's a fire hydrant, there'll be a sewer system here. Sandbags. There's the river. And there's asphalt here. Interesting. Maybe it was a start of a plan to actually put houses along here. Uh, there's, I don't know if you can see it down there, but there's pieces of concrete and square. Like, I mean, as if it's a, an old foundation pushed over or something. See right there? I was correct. There's the uh, manhole cover there, and it says right on there, pipeline sewer. So, I'm thinking, I'm, I am thinking that this was actually going to be a uh, future development. Maybe when they did Old Salem, uh, they did this at the same time. They, uh, the CCC did it for future development. Interesting. Oh, I just ran over another sewer, our manhole cover. Okay, these two pads that are right beside each other now, so. Oh, uh, I might not be able to go too far down there. I see a tree falling, but let's go back here a little bit because it looks like it's been washed out right here. So that's a definitely a good sized river. She's uh, definitely washed out here. But other than that, and of course, me, the good planner, I just remembered I only, I only brought the, uh, I didn't bring any spare batteries for the GoPro. So the only battery I got is the one that's in it. So I better shut it off and save a little bit of the, uh, save a little bit of the battery power. I think I gotta go that way a little bit before I can get back on the trail. So I gotta take the highway a little bit, but we'll see once I get up there. I don't think the grist mill is all that far away. <laughs> Caution, water valve. So that'll be feeding those hydrants, I'm sure. Wherever it is. I don't see it. I'm sure it's around here somewhere. Oh, right there. Standing on the damn thing. Right there. I would really like to know what was here in the past. Why this, why water, why sewer? As I'm coming along this trail, how the water was diverted from this over to the grist mill. I couldn't see anything. I couldn't see a, uh, any kind of a dam, any kind of, I don't know. <clears throat> I do not know. And I asked some people and nobody seems to know. So, so I'll sh take you up to the, the mill. So there's the highway right there. That, that road takes you not into um, Petersburg, but I think it starts with an A, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, 
So I just kind of did a little cross country here. So the grist mill is right there in front of us. I don't know if you can see it. It's right there. All right, guys, uh, just packing up. Uh, I've been out here for probably five days now. Um, beautiful spot, beautiful little spot and great trails around here. Uh, obviously through the old village or you go across the highway there's a bunch of trails along the river so um, definitely uh, a point to uh, if I'm in this area again to stop back again got the bike loaded up yesterday in the barbecue but I'll tell you something it hasn't been the nicest weather uh, in the last two days blowing cold I think it got down to around freezing last night um, the wind is as you can tell it's still uh, blowing pretty good right now it's maybe 42 43 but anyways, I'm just going to uh, pack up, put the flag away, get off the ramps, and uh, head up. And I'm going to go to the dump station because I did use the shower, so I thought, well, I must have well get rid of the gray water. I head out here. I'm, uh, I'm ready for uh, new adventures. So as always, be good, be kind, be careful. We'll talk to you guys later.